Welcome back to Literature Genres. In this video, we shall be discussing a poem which is written by William Cooper. The title of the poem is Light Shining Out of Darkness. In this video, we shall be discussing this poem. Before that, we shall be knowing about the life and works of William Cooper. William Cooper was born in 1731 and died in 1800 in England. We should know that he was the forerunner of romantic poetry. He has written anti-slavery poems. He was the friend of Newton. And he is a part of anti-slavery. He has written the poem called The Negro's Complaint. Now we shall be going into the stanzas of the poem. The first stanza. And this poem has been divided by six stanzas. Each stanza has four lines. We shall now look at the first answer. The first answer begins with God moves in a mysterious way. It is important to know that the first answer, the first line, the first line of the first answer is very, very famous because God moves in a mysterious way. It has become very popular since the this poem was published. Next line, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps into the sea and rides upon the storm. What this first stanza tells to the readers that this stanza is introducing about God and his miracles or performance. How does he perform in a mysterious way in this earth? The first answer begins as God moves in a mysterious way. He does so many miracles that we people could not understand. How does he do? How does he miracle upon the lives of the human in the earth? His wonders are very, very miracle. He is performing all the things that are wonders that we people cannot do. Being a normal people, we cannot do the performance done by God. For example, he tells in the third line of the first stanza, he plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. We cannot run or walk over the sea. It is possible to go to walk over the sea and rides upon the storm. It is uh, neither can we walk or run over sea or uh, uh, during the time the storm has been produced in the sea, we cannot run or uh, walk, but God does walk and run and rides upon the sea, upon the storm. So this is one of the examples for what miracles God does. So the first answer acknowledges about how God does miracles. But how can we reconcile human suffering with the promise of God's good providence? His ways far exceed human comprehension emergence from imagery in the lines. We cannot easily imagine ourselves with the gods. So it is not possible to compare with the gods miracles. But God is only miracle. That is why he begins as God moves in a mysterious way. In the second stanza, the poet William Cooper says, Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skills. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill. So in this stanza, what Cooper says to the readers that he tells about the way God thinks, the way God is thinking. So there is a difference between God's thinking and human thinking. Human thinking can be un understood, can be easily comprehended by any people, but it is not possible to understand the way God's thinking. Unfathomable. The first line is deep in unfathomable. This is called uh, unfathomable. Unfathomable means something is not able to understand. 
we cannot understand the way god's thinking it is a deep the way god's thinking is very very deep like minds minds is kind of a tunnel where treasures are being uh, found when you are digging and digging into the tunnel we can find treasures so such a treasure can be found and such a tunnel could be dug only by the power of god he says in the first second line never failing skill god's skill could never be failed the skills of god could never be failed but human skills could uh, maybe stopped maybe failure maybe powerless but god's powers are not failed such a failings never failing skills that god's have he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will he treasures up his bright designs he does so many things like when someone digs up into the tunnel into the mine we, he can find bright design bright gold like that all the plants all the designs uh, uh, found and done by god is so bright and so bright and these are all treasures and works his sovereign will he works for the people for his devotees why does he why does he uh, bless the people bless the devotees when god is absent physically in front of us we can easily say that god is not there god is not existed but suddenly he comes up yours in front of us and does so many help to the devotee who has strong faith in god so sooner or later god will appear he'll give anything to the devotees when he when he is asking god he will pour out treasures he'll pour out treasures to the devotees who have strong faith this is what the second stanza tells to the readers then in the third stanza you fearful saints fresh courage take the clouds you so much dread or big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head so the third stanza says to the unbelievers who are all not believing gods who are all not interested to worship god to whom god says you fearful saints fresh courage take you should have courage when you believe in god that god will help you wherever you are required to be courage you are, you are required to be very bold when rain coming you should not have fear upon looking at the sky and cloud god will pour out rains to you even when you are not believing god god will help you because he says in third line or big with mercy he does bigger things he does bigger things with mercy he shows his mercy even on the unbelievers he is so merciful and shall break in blessings on your head he will pour out many number of blessings on your head to your life he will make your life very prosperous even sometime you are against god god will always be mercy this is what william cooper says in the third stanza in the fourth stanza judge not the lord by feeble senses but trust him for his grace behind a frowning providence he hides a smiling face so in the fourth stanza william cooper says to the readers that we should not judge god by our weak senses we have all weak senses by which we are wrongly judging god's power that god doesn't bless us god doesn't help us though we, you go and worship regularly but god does not appear to you god does not hear your pain you should not judge like that you trust him for his grace he will send his grace to you for which you should have a strong faith william cooper says please do trust him do trust god for his grace one day he will show his mercy you will be released from all the pains and sufferings please do trust god behind a frowning providence though you may be under suffering troubles god will be testing you but he guides a smiling face at last he will send a number of blessings god will be smiling at you at the ending he knows that you're all being suffered that god has only sent but in the ending god will be he will be giving everything so he says judge not do not judge 
lord by our we feeble sense we have weaker sense we easily tell that god is not existed god doesn't help don't judge like that he says in the fifth stanza his purposes will ripen fast unfolding every hour the bud may have a bitter taste but the sweet will be the flower he says beautifully in the fifth stanza that though god will not helping you god will not be helping you god will not be appearing in front of you god will not be hearing in the beginning but in the ending you will realize that why god has not helped you because you may be lacking in worshiping you may be lacking in trusting god but god will be observing everything but his purposes will ripen fast though god will slow in hearing your pain in helping you are whatever asking whatever demanding to god god will be slow to do whatever your demands but the purpose will ripen fast but once he decides to help you everything that you have asked will come fast he says purpose will ripen fast something will ripe very fast once he decides to help you it will very soon come on your hand unfolding every hour every minute you will be happy you will be delighted that you are very happy your life is come back your misery poverty immediately be disappeared the bud may have a bitter taste though the bud the flowers bud may be bitter to taste when you eating the sweet that is the flower which means you have to wait until you get a full flower until you get a full flower you have to wait the waiting may be bitter once you get the full flower you receiving and seeing the beautiful full flower that is the sweet you feel that it is sweet he says so god will be slow in helping you appearing and hearing but the ending part that is the flower which comes very beautifully he says so this is how william cooper praising god's miracles it is kind of a hymns it's a praise song how god god's power working to the humans when the humans are in suffer when humans have a strong faith in god i hope that this video is helpful for those who are in need of uh, this poem's explanation thank you for watching if you like this video please subscribe and share to your friends thank you for watching